everyone welcome back uh, looking forward to going through this lesson with you on uh, the burning bush uh, and Moses uh, we'll be working out of Exodus 3 this week um, where we're at in God's Word is our story finds us you know really several hundred years after uh, the last one with Joseph uh, and uh, we're seeing God's promise uh, to Abraham from Genesis chapter 15 that we covered a few lessons ago uh, being fulfilled as and he's about to call his people out of their slavery from Egypt but calling them out started by only calling one man first Moses one of the most unlikely people uh, to use uh, he had killed a man and was a fugitive on the run and he lacked confidence you know he really does sound like a prime candidate for God to use. Anyways, moving on to the hook question. What was one of the most uncomfortable things that you have ever had to do? Why? This is a great question. I wouldn't expect answers like given out right away. Let them sit on it and think about it a little bit. But, uh, you know, as people are coming in and you're trying to get people to concentrate on and focus in on it's time to talk. Go ahead and bust this question. Okay, after the hook question, guys, I would go ahead and just read the transition section just like it is there in your in your booklet. Uh, today's story introduces us to a man named Moses. He was born to uh, Hebrew slaves, but he ended up living in the palace of the king of uh, Egypt and was raised by Pharaoh's own daughter. In a moment of passion, he killed a man. He fled Egypt, the place of his birth, and... Uh, he went to the land of Midian. There he met a girl, got married, had some kids, and worked for his father-in-law. Until one day, God had a different plan. And that's where I would say, here's the story from God's Word. And I would go ahead and story tell that. I'm going to do something a little different this week. I'm not going to story tell. Um, I figured you guys kind of have a good handle on it. So go ahead and just story tell Exodus 3, 1 through 22. The best you can, remember, don't memorize it, relax, tell it in your own words, be as close as you can to the story, don't indulge it or commentate, just, just you know, tell the story. Um, but there's some things that I want to kind of point out that this story is going to bring up. Um, I love this story because Moses was running from his past, but ironically, God calls him back to face it. Um, as you're getting ready to uh, talk about uh, what this passage has to bring out in the question time. Uh, I would I would use that. Um, some people are running or dealing with some things in their past, and they haven't yet faced them. And Moses had serious confidence issues, didn't he? Uh, I can't go. I got a stuttering problem. He makes tons of excuses to God through this passage, but uh, God says, "No, you're going anyways." And I love that about the story because it proves that God will use imperfect people to do incredible things. And you know, you can draw a parallel from this to modern times and right into your own group. Um, Moses was the spokesman for God uh, to the most powerful king on the planet at the time, Pharaoh. God challenged the power of Israel and the Pharaoh himself. He used Moses to announce it. Then Moses acted as a mediator between God and um, and his chosen people much like Christ does today for us so God can and will use each of us today to challenge the mighty powers of the gates of hell that we face he will use us to proclaim his grace and his power advancing his kingdom one person at a time and that's why disciple making is so important guys Another thing that's kind of cool in the story is the burning bush is an example of a theophany. Uh, a theophany is a, is a fancy way uh, to say uh, a manifestation of God that is tangible to the human senses. Uh, that's pretty important. There's, this is only one example of a, a theophany that we find in scripture. Uh, we see um, theophany uh, back in the story of um, when Abraham and God was uh, uh, 
making his covenant with God, the fire pot, the burning fire pot that walked through the two halves of the animals. Um, later on in the Exodus and wandering in the deserts, uh, you see the, the fire cloud or the fire, the pillar of fire by night and the uh, pillar of cloud by day. That's a theophany. Um, the three angels uh, that met Abraham by the tree of Mamre uh, were uh, an example of a theophany as well. They're, they're sprinkled all throughout the Old Testament. I just want to introduce that idea to you because, you know, I'm a geek basically and now you will be too. Um, another thing to note in this story is that the name that God gave Moses, he says, I am who I am. Uh, and some other translations uh, have it a little differently. But the bottom line is this speaks of God being the eternal one. And it relates back to the patriarchs of the nation, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Because, um, remember, the people were in captivity for 400 years, and they were slaves. So they really weren't allowed to practice openly their worship. I mean, some of them did still, but they would have been also heavily influenced by the, uh, the, the gods of, of Egypt. So it was really good for God to bring them back to their roots, essentially. Um, and a fun thing that you can do as for part of your prep is to check out Exodus uh, chapter 6 verses 1 through 8. God kind of fills in the details about who he is. In the same way that God is Father, the eternal I am, Jesus is also called I am. That's in John 8, uh, 58. Um, and we're going to spend a lot of time, actually, when we get into the New Testament about the I am statements that Jesus makes. Uh, that'll be really cool for you. Uh, Jesus is the same yesterday and today and forever. Uh, that's uh, that's kind of what Hebrews 13.8 talks about. Um, in fact, the very one who was speaking to Moses through the burning bush later came to us in human form as Jesus of Nazareth. So that's kind of cool. I just wanted to point some of that stuff out that you can maybe uh, use in group. Uh, the big four questions, what do we learn about God in this story? Well, obviously I've covered some of that. He's the eternal one and things like that. What do we learn about man and ourselves in this story? Um, when you come face to face with uh, the reality of who God is, often you find yourself feeling, I'm not worthy. and uh, But God... If you'll notice in this passage, is a sweet promise of, no, I'll strengthen you, don't worry. Um, what did you learn new in this story? You know, again, answers vary, but that is probably one of my favorite questions uh, of the big four. And what should you do differently because of this story? Uh, again, answers are going to really vary in this. Um, the extra questions I think are definitely worth getting to, though. Can you relate to Moses and the response that he gave God at first? Why? Uh, I can't go. Send someone else, God. Yeah, I think we can all relate. Um, the second question for extra questions is go back and read Genesis 15 together. Is God faithful? Explain your answer. Well, Genesis 15 is where God makes the covenant, and he actually tells Abraham that his descendants will be slaves for 400 years in a foreign land, but God will deliver them and punish that nation. So it's worth checking out. 15 together as a group and when you hear the word holy what do you think about is that biblical um, things to do between the group this time around uh, as your group planned a Matthew party yet uh, when is the last time you ate together as a group if you haven't done this yet you may want to get it on and I really want to encourage you to do that take time just to enjoy each other on a social level uh, who have you talked to from the group lately just to see how they're doing? Are you guys calling each other uh, throughout the week, just not during Sundays and not during your group time? Are you talking to each other? Are you communicating? Are you having genuine, authentic, biblical community? I hope so. Um, and the memory verse for the week is uh, Exodus three fourteen through 15. Uh, it just happens to be the part where God says, I am who I am. Say this to the people of Israel. I am has sent me to you. Uh, anyways, um, awesome guys. I hope you have a great week. And if you have any questions, uh, don't hesitate to call your team leader or myself. And God bless you. And thank you for all you do.